Savage Finance, because it's a jungle out there that wants your money. Here I will teach you how to manage the jungle and make it out. Welcome to another edition of Savage Finance. This is your host, Glendon Cameron, serial entrepreneur and your personal money expert. Here to school you on personal finance, the savage finance way. What I want you to do is to subscribe to the channel, to like the channel, and to comment, and to go back to the beginning of the channel. Even if you come across this video three years in the future, I want you to go to the front of the channel and start watching the playlist and watching the videos because there's economic benefit in there for you, man. It's gonna help you get your money right. And that's what we're talking about today. We're gonna to talk about the B word, budget. Even millionaires need budgets. You ever hear someone winning the lottery and literally within six or seven years, they're absolutely broke? Because here's the thing, even if you are a millionaire, it's a finite sum of money. It's not an endless sum of money. And many people who become well off feel that the money's just gonna keep coming regardless of what they do. And that's just not the facts. Even if you are a multimillionaire, you still need to live on a budget. These are the fundamentals of personal finance. So your budget should be written down. It should include all of your necessities, utilities, mortgage, whatever you have. This should be in your budget. In, a junk, in conjunction with a budget, you need to have asset allocation plans. More on that in a minute. And you need to have an overall plan. This will make up the fundamentals of your personal finance because let's just say you're out there, you're making $95,000 a year. You're like, well, I make $95,000 a year. I can afford X, Y, and Z. Well, actually, if you do the math, in some cases you cannot afford X, Y, and Z because there's something called an opportunity cost. If you buy that car today and you finance that car today, it's going to delay your retirement in the future. That's the opportunity cost of buying and financing that car today. So once you gotta get into the math, like I will give you a quick calculation. Let's say you have an index uh, dividend investment portfolio. These are stocks that you buy that pay a dividend. And let's say you have $200,000 in your dividend portfolio. That's gonna pay you about seven to $8,000 a year. Let's say you had a $200,000 house that you rented out for $1,600 per month. That's $20,000 a year. Minus 10% for property taxes and insurance and stuff. That's still going to be $10,000 per year more than the dividend stock portfolio. Now, one of the things, because before we get into investing and Roth RAs and RAs, we're going to address the fundamentals. We're going to address your financial foundation because this is where it all starts. Proper allocation of resources, proper allocation of funds, setting, living on a budget. It all starts there because this is one of the reasons that so many people went crazy with the cryptocurrency craze. Oh, I'm gonna buy Bitcoin at 2,000 and it's gonna be 20,000. This is the mindset of the people who bought Bitcoin. They felt that Bitcoin would appreciate faster than any debt that they had. And at one point, it did. I actually bought Bitcoin in 2010 and I sold in 2017. So I held on to it for almost eight years. And I got it for literally 80 cents, 90 cents, and I sold it for 18 six. Good investment. But I exited Bitcoin because Bitcoin became fanatical. And this is in desperation because people were looking upon Bitcoin to clean up their bad financial decisions in the past. I'm gonna buy some Bitcoin today and it's gonna be worth a million dollars in two years. Then I can sell it and pay off all my debts and be clean. It didn't happen. 
For most people, it didn't happen. For a select few people who bought a lot of Bitcoin, honestly, I wish I had bought way more in 2010 than I did because I could have, I mean, good Lord, but hindsight's 2020. But I knew that the fanatical nature of cryptocurrency would bring all types of crazy people in. You've got people who are, who are investing vast sums in the cryptocurrency and once again, my advice to you, if you're an investor in cryptocurrency, be very, very, very careful. It's not like a stock. It's not like rent residential rental properties. It's nothing like that. Your money can completely evaporate in a few seconds. And one of the things is, you know, if you're an early adapter and you can get the crypto cheap, like pennies on the dollar and hold on to it for 10 years, that's the way to go. But buying at the top of the market, at the height of the market, this is how you lose money. And this is foundational, financial foundational stuff. Because once you're gonna start with your budget, you're gonna start with proper asset allocation, and you're gonna have an overall plan. Now, those three things comprise your personal finance financials. The budget is super, super, super important because the budget is going to keep you in check. Because if you have a budget, let's say you make $95,000 a year and you watch this channel and you know about setting up an emergency fund, you know about not financing cars, once again, be sure to go to the beginning of the channel and watch the videos from start to end. You know all this stuff and you actually have $95,000 properly allocated. You don't have any credit card debt. You don't have any car debt. You may be renting or you may have a mortgage, but that's about it. And you pretty much have close to $3,000 a month left over to invest. That's proper allocation, not spending all of your money on trinkets, toys, and things like this. Because one of the big issues is, and I was reading the article today, that one in three Americans, even if they're making six figures, run out of cash before the end of the month because these people don't have proper asset allocation. They don't have emergency funds. They don't have savings accounts. They don't have targeted money goals. They're just out here living. And I don't want you to be out here just living because that's a good way to end up broken poor. Go ahead today. I want you to sit down and your budget should be written. It should be a written budget. And, uh, what I like to call a bubble gum budget, including everything, including the bubble gum. Put everything on there, and then what you have left over is disposable income. And you want to have as much disposable income as possible. This is why I advocate, you know, go through the videos. You should never finance a car. You should pay cash. This is why you need to have targeted financial goals. Let's say you want to go on a vacation. You should have a checking account or savings account with the tag vacation on it. And each time you get paid, you should be throwing some coins into that vacation account. So when it comes time for you to take the vacation, you already have the money and you don't have to put it on a credit card. Even though I advise using a rewards credit card for every purchase, because this way you can travel for free. Uh, I went through a period of three years where I was traveling first class for free. And this is taking an opportunity of something you're already doing. But once again, you want to be cash heavy. And let's talk about this. Now, with the emergency fund, I had set a target for 5,000. 5,000 is going to solve most emergencies. Ideally, you want to have a robust savings account of 25 to $30,000. This is not your 401k. This is not your RRA. This is a money, cash money in the bank. I was watching a video of some investors who actually have two and a half years of cash reserves because they're living on their stock portfolio and that can be a little risky. So the cash reserves or a backup, which I find to be a great ideal, and I'm glad they mentioned that in this video because so many people leave out that part. Because right now the stock market is going crazy. And like I said, in future videos, we will get into investing. But right now, you gotta have the proper foundation to invest. You're, you're seeing all of these videos, like I got a thousand dollars. 
Invest $1,000 in dividend stock. That's gonna get you like 17 bucks a year. Invest $1,000 in the bond. That's gonna get you eight or nine bucks in the year. What I wanna prepare you for is investing in the future. Get yourself financially clean, which means no debt, and then you can become an investor. Because typically, when you're trying to invest, when you have debt that you have that has an interest rate, your investment gains are not going to be enough to overcome the money that you're losing by paying interest. It, you, you can't win that game that way. Many people have tried and they've lost because 18% interest is higher than the six or 7% return. Do the math. So even if you're, you've got investments that are earning you 10% and you have debt that has an 18% interest rate, you're still 8% behind. And the longer it takes you to pay off this debt, because some debts reset and re-trigger like student loans, like never put your student loans in debt consolidation or put them on pause because the interest keeps going. So you could go ahead and put $30,000 of student loans on pause and then you know, two or three years later, you now now have 32, 35, $36,000 worth of debt because of the interest. So interest can be wicked when it's working against you. Compound interest can be great when it's working for you. So you wanna have interest working for you, which is why you wanna get yourself as clean as you possibly can, no car payments, no credit card payments. And if you got a mortgage, that's, that's to me is good debt because you have a mortgage on an asset that's appreciating that you could sell or rent out or make some money with it. So that's okay. But other than that, you should have no debt when you start investing. Because once you get clean, and this is the reason, because once you get clean, you will be able to throw way more money into your investments. Have you ever heard of FIRE, Financial Independence Retire Early? These guys, have high incomes and they're saving 70 and 80% of their income and throwing it into the market. And they're building up these robust portfolios really, really quickly. You want to be in a position where you can save and invest 50% of your income. But once again, you're gonna have your emergency fund already funded, you're not gonna have any debt, and then when you're in this position, you can see your portfolio grow really rapidly because you're putting in principal. When I was in the stock market many years ago, my portfolio was like 1.8, but I was living on 50% of my income and I was investing the rest. This is why my portfolio grew so quickly. And this is why I, I had a lot of things and I actually sold that to pay off, you guessed it, some debt. Because I had did something stupid and I had taken out a business loan and I was like, trying to play the game before I became financially educated. I had this big ass business loan over here. I had the stock portfolio over here. I had money all over the place. And one of the things that you want to do is concentrate your investments like a laser. I know this goes against much of the popular advice out there, which is to diversify, diversify, diversify. You should be investing in things that you actually know forward and backwards. You've gone to the library, you've gone to the internet, you've done the research, you know exactly what your money's going into it and you know exactly how this asset class will perform. You know it could go up, it could go down, but you have a pretty good idea because you've done your research. Once again, never invest in something you don't know anything about. Cryptocurrency! I had to put that in there because you know, people, don't know about cryptocurrency and it's just like, well, grandma, you know, she got a lot of money in Bitcoin, so I'm gonna put some money in Bitcoin. Don't do that. Don't be that kind of investor. Know where your investment dollars are going. But once again, what I want you to do tonight is sit down and write a written budget. Then, for anything you wanna do, this is your asset allocation plan. If you wanna take a vacation, go to the bank, open up a new savings account, throw some coins in there every time you get paid, and this is how you're gonna run your life because this keeps you out of debt, the American credit indoctrination system, and it keeps your stress level ultra, ultra low. You'd be balling out of control. You'd be taking vacations. You'd be doing this stuff, man, because that's what you can do when you follow this. And then when you, or whatever age you are, and you wanna retire, this is your overall investment plan. 
where do you want to be when you're 65? How much money do you need? Write it down and figure out the investment vehicles that can get you there. Now, here's something that's going to be a little controversial. You don't have to have a million dollars in your retirement account. So this is what you need 1.5, you need 1.8. Let me tell you a little story. I knew these two teachers, and this is gonna be the next video. They lived on his income and they took her income and they bought income producing rental properties. When I met these people, they did not have a million dollars in assets. They didn't have that. More like four or $500,000 in properties that were paid off that was paying them about $9,000 a month. Do you understand if you had three rental properties that were paid off, that could be your retirement? Just three. And we will be talking about that in future videos. I just thought I would put that in your head so it's something to think about because if you are making proper financial decisions, you're not gonna need a million, depending upon your lifestyle, and depending on where you live, depending upon your income. So we'll be talking about that stuff and more in future videos. So with this, I will see you later. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to go to the front of the channel and watch all of the videos from start to finish because they will give you economic benefit and help you have a better financial life. This is Glendon Cameron, your host, giving you financial advice your mom and dad yeah. never had. Yeah. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest. People wanna talk that talk in reality. You have not seen me in action. You think the come up comes overnight. You ain't behind the scenes. Trust me, these things don't just happen. No shade to Gerald, but G's don't come easy when you tryna eat. I producing and rapping. I read that contract you sent me to sign, but excuse me, I can't help myself. I'm just laughing. Hey, you try to cut out a piece of my pie, and I ask you politely, what's it that you offer me? Yeah, I produce all my own beats, and I have no intention of losing my publisher. Yeah, independent individual boy, I've been eating off passive residuals. Yeah, let's be professional. Thanks for your time. But I had to decline at that principle hey, I've been scheming up a plan hey, I've been saving all I can hey, You can call me David Rams hey, The way I handle these bands hey, We ain't messing with the old model oh, You wear a new kid, we full throttle oh, Just know that the come up is not a flow My amigos, they focus, no one to do After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it After I get it, I reinvest after I get it, I reinvest After I get it, I reinvest Stack it, stack it, stack it, put it back in it